Has anybody done the elder interview yet? <laughs> you started it? My name is Paul Ricken. I'm a history teacher at Black River Falls High School. I came to Black River in 1990, right in the wake of Act 31. We began the process of trying to integrate in a more natural way within our curriculum things related to Native history, Native culture. The distinct advantage being in Black River because the Ho-Chunk Nation has its government here. 20% of our students are Ho-Chunk. So our school is pretty diverse. We're rural, but we're diverse. We had definitely a fair amount of racial tension in this school in the 90s. I don't want to make it seem more than it was, but we definitely had um, situations that were not healthy. And it's been fun to watch that evolve because we've really moved uh, in a pretty positive direction, I believe, as far as the relationship between the tribe and the, the school. I think our students are remarkably tolerant here. I like to think it's because of some of the work that we've been doing. What we wanted to get away from in our curriculum was simply adding this in. We didn't want to do that, and we wanted to instead start incorporating it or integrating it. And I think that was the unique thing that we did. I make it a point at every opportunity that I can to hand out a copy of Act 31 to the teachers. I just feel like you have to repeat and repeat and repeat and keep it on people's plate. Otherwise, they can forget in a hurry. Because we are crowded. I mean, the curriculum is crowded. There's no doubt about that. And we've had this discussion here a lot. History is a subject where you can get into kind of the coverage trap. I mean, if you get into that idea that you have to cover everything, it's impossible. There's no way you can. We need to teach less and teach it better instead of trying to do this big, broad thing. And I think that's what um, is really affecting uh, young teachers right now. They're, they're feeling overwhelmed with how much is in there that we have to teach. But I think we got to get past that. And you need to think differently about textbooks and curriculum and you have to be a little freer in your idea of what should be brought in to the courses. Much more use of imagery I think than we used to do. Uh, that's terribly important. The model that I try to promote right now in my classes is there's a historian named Daniel Richter who talks about history facing east and just when you're teaching U.S. history, just it's always been a facing west narrative. It's always been the movement across the... But what did it look like to the people that were facing east? And, you know, if you can just flip that around in the classroom a little bit, the kids can grab onto that pretty quickly. It's about teaching good history, which is multiple perspectives. So that's kind of the road we've gone down, and people will come up to me and say, well, you know, we don't deal with Act 31 a lot in our school because we don't have Native students. And of course that's just exactly wrong thinking. Because Act 31 really was not aimed at Native students, it was aimed at the non-Native audience of Wisconsin that didn't understand the Native history. I mean that was the premise of it, to help those that are non-Native understand this story because it's absolutely, I don't know how you could understand Wisconsin history without the story. It seems impossible to me. Wisconsin, it's kind of the epicenter of Indian country. There's, you can, you can, you kind of got it all right here. All the history. You've got the 11 tribes, you've got the Brotherton story. Uh, tribes that migrated into the state, tribes that were removed, you know, massacres, just abundance of history there. If you're going to teach the American story, this has to be included. It cannot be added on, it cannot be extra. And frankly, I think it needs to be a K-12 environment of doing that. And one of the things we're working on this year is trying to expand this outside of the social studies area. So you can look at your literature program, your art program, your music program. It can all be incorporated in a natural way and then it becomes second nature to the students. They, they see it as part of the, you know, the, the tapestry of American history.